Hey planner friends, how's it going? Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. My name is Ryan and this is Man With The Plans and we are back to do my April budget report card. See where the money went, it's all come and gone. We are in the middle of May. We can see how well I did in all the categories and how much I was able to put towards my debt snowball. So before we dive into that though, if you are interested in seeing all about budgeting and planning and an occasional vlog here and there, I really ask that you go ahead and click that red subscribe button so you can see my content in your newsfeed every time one of my videos is released. I make new videos every Monday and Thursday. Thursday is about financial stuff and my debt snowball, and April is all about planning and budgeting, which clearly, as you can see here, I'm in my Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Notebook here. This is, actually they're coming out with a new one in June, so stay tuned for that. I'm excited to see what that looks like. But if you're interested in any of the Erin Condren products, I'll leave a link down below. This kit in particular is from Kathleen Decade. I will also leave that linked down below. And any of the pens that I use, I'll try to throw that all down there as well. We will deal with this side in a moment. I think we are all curious about sort of where the money went. So let's zoom in a little bit, shall we, and see how I did. All right, so for the income column, let me just say that I have a day job here, and I still am unsure of how regular these paychecks are, but I think at this point I'm gonna need to go ahead and change this, because I've had this number for quite a while here, $1,862.30. $32.30 a paycheck above what I was expecting, so thumbs up for that. Um, and then transfer, a little bit of an explanation about this. My parents and I made an agreement when I went away to school that they would pay for half of my student loans. And so this is their contribution to what would be half as like the minimum payment. So my debt snowball is irrespective of them, but they agreed to do that. So lovingly, my mom transferred over the $300. So there was no change there. The last thing is that I have a side hustle. I'm a part-time project manager for my friend Jen's company. Team Hey Jen Casey is the name. I will leave a link to her blog and website down below if you wanna check that out. And so I work 15 to 20 hours a week depending on what we have going on. And so I usually budgeted this amount. Um, this is after taxes since I have to put it away on my own. And what we ended up getting was $663.62. So a little bit over like $13.62. Overall, my total amount for income came to 4,000. $688.20. So, a decent number over what I thought, just about $78, which will be helpful because so there are some expenses that I didn't actually plan for this month that came in really handy to make everything work itself out. So, moving down to variable expenses, let's see here. For gas, we came in at $74.08, which means we were $4.08 over which makes sense because I did a lot of driving with my aunt when she was visiting for Easter and a bunch of other things. We had to drive out for a meeting out in Western Minnesota, so that took some time, so I'm not really shocked by that. The next thing is groceries, and in total I spent $262, so we were $12 over. I think this is partly because I wanted to make sure I had plenty of food for when my aunt did visit, and I had a couple of friends stop over at some point, so I wanted to make sure we had some snacks available for them. So, you know what, that's what you do. And the next thing is restaurant, and that came in at 104. So we were over by, what, $29? And that's fine, nothing I can do about it now. And then the next category here is YouTube, which came in at $53. I didn't spend a ton of money in this category, partly because I knew I would be at Go Wild in May. So I wanted to kind of take it easy, which means that I ended up coming under this category by $22, which is nice. The next thing is personal, which is $250, and I spent $271.87. And that means that I am $21.87 over which these two kind of cancel each other out, but there were some expenses I hadn't planned for in there that I need to take care of, and so you know what, we're just moving along. The next thing is UMS. This is my like utilities, so it's water, and I think sewer and trash, and that came in under, which is cool, at 25.17, so that means that I was saving $19.83. And now the last one here is Excel, my energy bill. That's electricity and heating. And that came in, finally, the winter is over, so it came down significantly to $58.98, which means that I was under budget by $21.02. So, if you add up what the overall is, the actuals, 
it came to $849.10, which means I was only over by about $4.10, which I don't think is too bad. The other expense I wanna acknowledge at some point, and I'm gonna add it down over here, is that I had some car maintenance come up, and originally it was gonna cost about $300, but then it ended up being a recall, so it only cost me $174, but that means that there was all coming from the sinking fund, so I didn't even have to worry about it. I will leave a link to my sinking fund video up over in the card for you if you're curious. Basically a sinking fund, the high level version of it is that I prepay expenses in a separate savings account. I use Capital One 360, and when an incident happens like that, I just go ahead and either use the debit card that the account gave me, or I just transfer the money back over. So it, it acts like it kinda cancels it all out, which is nice because then I don't have to worry about something like this. So while it didn't really cross my budget, I just wanna keep it in mind that, that an expense did happen. So let's go ahead and go through the bottom part. Obviously over here you can see that the fixed expenses, well, they're fixed for a reason and they didn't really change. So let's go down to the total section, the moment we've all been waiting for. In terms of our income, we came in a little bit higher at $4,688.20. Our fixed expenses stayed the same at $2,793.20. And then we were a little bit over in our variable expenses at $849.10. So let's total all of this up for you. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Okay, so here we go. When all is said and done and we total this up, our actual leftover balance is $1,045 and 90 cents. Now, the other thing to be clear here is that um, I'm taking out 500 for Go Wild to make sure that I have that money set aside. So if we subtract 500 from that, our remaining balance that will go towards my car loan is $545.90. Now, let's flip over and talk a little bit about the loans right here. So I only have two left. I started with a significant more amount a couple of years ago. I'll leave a link to that video up over here in case you're curious. I set my minimum payment at $600. And with this month, I finally, I realized that one of the payments is normally $300 and it came in at $298.05, which kind of concerned me because I was wondering where that went. And it turns out the fee for my automated IntelliPayment or whatever, it was an issue. And so I ended up canceling my IntelliPayment program, which, you know, initially it was great at the time because it helped me get an interest rate reduction because I hadn't had a car loan before, which I don't think I plan on having one again anyway. I needed to go ahead and make sure that I was able to take care of that. And so while I was irritated that it sort of went down that way, I wanted to make sure that I was able to move on these payments. So I called them and fought with them and they gave me a refund of the last payment that they owed me, which was helpful because it had never cleared my account, but they also charged me a $25 cancellation fee. So in actuality, I put $1,069.85 into my car loan. However, if you take off $25 of that, in actuality, what it really came out to was, here we go, so this is the new total here. It is currently $1,044.85. So. Not the best month, but also not too shabby. And so I'm really happy to see that move down. And then the nice part about my uh, student loan is that it cleared 20, that $26,000 mark. So we are in $25,000 range. So we're getting closer and closer and closer, which is really, really cool. So I'm hoping that this month I'll be able to knock off a significant chunk of my car loan, but we shall see. The last thing we'll cover really quickly before we wrap this video up is the no spends. I only had 12 no spend, so did not hit that mark, but that's okay. You know what, it's not the end of the world. Um, one of the areas that I think I did sort of halfway decently is bring my lunch. There were some days where I would, and there were other days when I wouldn't. You know, I would just sort of go out with friends and stuff like that. And I can safely say that this one did not work out as well either. So overall, I would give myself 0.5 out of three goals for the month, but that's okay because you know what, we realize that you can't always get it right and that's totally okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over and we can sort of sign out for the rest of this video because I think we are all said and done. So if you go ahead and enjoyed this video of talking about my budget, give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it, it does help me out. I make new videos every Monday and every Thursday like I said at the beginning. 
You can find me over on Instagram at a man with the plans over in the uh, ancillary You'll see both of my names there and then I'm also over on Facebook at a man with the plans And we talk all about budgeting and planning and all that good stuff So go ahead and check that out if you're curious and until next time planner friends hope your budget's doing pretty well, and I'll see you next time. Bye